<coughs> Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 16th of December 2019 and the time has just gone 9.40 GMT. And it's been a fairly positive st start to the uh, European trading session. Um, decent gains we made uh, in London as well as continental Europe. Uh, and it's a similar reason to why we saw big gains at the back end of last week. Uh, a combination of things. Uh, first things first, on the kind of global scale, uh, the US-China trade agreement, uh, phase one of it was, it was agreed upon at the back end of last week. That has led to um, a, a kind of a bull of sentiment rippling out uh, across the world. And also, um, on the kind of early hours of Friday morning, we, we got the results of the UK general election, uh, where the Conservative Party won a very sizable majority. And obviously, the Conservative Party are pro business, are pro business, and they're pro Brexit. And the kind of feeling is that, given that the size of the majority, uh, it'd, be, it'd be much uh, the UK is in for much more decisive governing. Um, so we're seeing we're seeing a, a large move to the upside um, in the London markets, uh, London uh, London stocks on the back of that. Uh, we've also had some better expected economic indicators out of China overnight. Uh, if you go to our trading platform and under news and analysis here on the, on the trading platform, and we click on the uh, market calendar, we can just you can see here that we had um, some decent numbers out of China overnight. So the uh, the urban investment year to date in, um, in terms of say fixed asset investment that came in uh, in line with expectations of 5.2%. Industrial production came in at 6.2%, better than expected, and retail sales came in at 8%, uh, also better than expected. So, uh, we did see some decent numbers out of uh, out of China overnight. That's a factor as well. We have seen some mixed economic indicators or double economic indicators um, from from Europe, uh, from, you know, France, Germany, and the UK, all had not so not so hot um, flash um, manufacturing PMI figures and service PMI figures, but nonetheless. Uh, the kind of wider theme is the, the fact that, that the US and China have signed the trade agreement, or phase one at least of it, and also uh, the back of the, the, the size of a victory for Boris Johnson's Conservative Party. What I'll do now is I'll look at the week ahead article, and uh, that can be found on our website. If you go to cmcrockets.com and under insights and under news analysis, you'll find that the bulk of the articles that we write get posted to this section of the website. Um, and, and, and we let's take a look at um at, at, at the, uh, the week ahead article. We could see later on today we have the update of the Bank of England stress test results. Uh, we have third uh, tomorrow we have third quarter figures from Trainline. Um, uh, across Tuesday Wednesday we have UK average earnings and uh, and the uh, CPI numbers coming out. On um on Thursday we have uh, fourth quarter retail sales figures from the uh, from the UK. And on Thursday, we have second quarter figures from Nike over in the US. Uh, we have the Bank of England interest rate decision uh, on, on Thursday. And on Friday, we have third quarter uh, UK GDP. So keep an eye out for those um, economic uh, economic announce announcements this week. They're going to be the big ones to keep an eye out. Uh, these are going to be the big ones and kind of add some volatility to, to the markets. Uh, I'll start off by looking at the FTSE 100, uh, go through a few indices, a few currency pairs, and then some commodities. And like I was saying, the fact that uh, Boris Johnson's pro business Conservative Party won a size majority really boosted British equities the last uh, the last couple of trading sessions. Essentially, there's, you know, there's been so much kind of political uncertainty hanging over the UK. Um, I know the UK hasn't left the European Union just yet, but um, in advance of this uh, general election, Boris Johnson did manage to broker a deal with the European Union in relation to exiting the European Union. Every uh, Conservative candidate that was running it in the general election support pledged to support that deal. So the kind of belief is that um, you know an old deal Brexit is still a possibility, but the belief is that uh, the, it's likely that, that the UK will be exiting the European Union uh, in a matter of weeks, and they'll probably be doing it on the terms that were brokered between Boris Johnson and the EU back uh, back a few months ago. So we've seen here a decent move to the upside in the FTSE 100. In fact, the FTSE 100 has hit a level last seen uh, early August, late, um, you know, kind of, you know, late, uh, in around kind of uh, early August, uh, late July. So give you, give you an idea of how, how strong these are on the FTSE 100. You know, we've had a multi-month high, so the sentiment is clearly pushing to the upside. If you take a look at the MACD indicator, MACD histogram, we can see that positive momentum is increasing. So the 
the movement we're seeing in the underlying market has been confirmed by the steady increase in positive momentum. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at our uh, you know, testing 7,600. If the market though, does take a bit of a breather and as it moves to the downside, we could see support from going from this area here in around 7,400. And if you even drop below that, support can be found from this red line here, which is the 20 moving average, and that comes to play at 73.22. Take a look at what's going on over Germany. The Euro market is also uh, in very decent shape. You know, we're not too far away from you know 22 month highs that were posted uh, that we saw only on, on Friday just gone. So we're, we're, we're clearly in very much a kind of bullish trend and upward trend. If we continue to kind of press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 13,600 in the in the medium term. Any um, and if we do have a bit of a move to the downside. Support can be found from this zone here in around 13,200 or brass from this blue line here, the 50 moving average. We can see how it actually that might see a support uh, at the beginning of uh, earlier on this month. So, the metric has been important in the past, it makes it uh, more likely it will be important in the future, but obviously, there are no guarantees. So, keep an eye on this blue line here, and that comes into play uh, just south of 13,000, 12,992. So, in the entire zone of 13,000 being a big psychological number. And also the 50 moving average coming to play at 12,992. That area might act as support should we have a move to the downside. But if we do have a, a size of break below that, that could pave the way for this area here in around 12,800 to be targeted. Take a look now at the US markets. They're in far better shape, as good a shape the European, uh, the European markets are in. The US markets are in far better shape. So. We're actually far away from, uh, from all-time highs um, on, on, uh, on the US markets. We're now we're looking at the Dow Jones. So uh, we're currently expecting the Dow Jones to open um, around 28,195. If you press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting 28,200, 300, 400, and so on and so forth. And all these kind of metrics would be, you know, uh, fresh all-time highs. It should be, should we achieve them? Uh, any get us any put up pullbacks? Could see fresh buyers enter the fold because, as you can see, buying on the dip has been a popular strategy in the last number of months. So, if we do drift lower from here, we could head back to the psychology board number of 28,000. And even if you drop below that, this zone here down towards 27,500, or coming up with this blue line, which is there, thereabouts, the blue line is um, at the 50 moving average that could act as support. And even if you drop below that, we, we could be heading back down to this area here at the lows. Um, the lows of late October uh, in around 26,915. So that was our area. Could provide support should we have a fairly decent size, a decent uh, pullback. I shall now take a look at the S&P 500. It's a fairly similar picture. Whereby the market, uh, we're, we're calling the S&P 500 to open around 3,182. There, thereabouts, which you know isn't too far away in the kind of region uh, of a fresh all-time high. So if you can press on higher from here on the uh, S&P 500. We could be looking at targeting 3,100, sorry, 3,200. And if you go beyond that, you know 3,210, 20, so on and so forth. Uh, any move to the downside in the uh, S&P 500? Could find some support from this area here uh, in around um, 3,136 or perhaps around 3,100 itself. Uh, it's only really, even if you have a decent, a decent move to the downside, we could find some support from this blue line here, the 50 moving average, and that comes to play in a 3,073. Take a look at the euro versus the US dollar. So Broadly speaking, since early October, we have seen a kind of a rebound in, in, uh, in euro dollar. Broadly speaking, we've been pushing higher. We obviously did hit uh, in late in late November, uh, kind of you know, multi week low, multi month low, but we have been moving steadily higher since then. And if we can manage to hold above this yellow line here, the 100 moving average, which comes into play at one spot 1064, if you can hold above that. We could be looking at retesting this area here in around 11, what sorry, 1 spot 11.79. And if you go beyond that, we could be looking at directly this price here in around 1 spot 12.49. Uh, if, if you do have a, have a fairly sizable break, 
below the 100 moving average here. We can really get retest this zone in around 1 spot 10. Take a look now at the pound versus the US dollar. So starting on a great run uh, on Thursday. On, well, the, the exit poll was announced also in, on Friday as well on the back of the pretty decisive um, Conservative Party victory at the U recent UK general election. So the market's in a, a very strong upper trend. In fact, the level the levels we've seen have, have been the strongest uh, on, on pound dollar since May last year. So give you an indication of how bullish the, uh, the British pound is. Steady increase in, uh, in the MACD histogram, the MACD indicator down here. So the markets, the online market's moving higher. We're seeing a steady increase in, in a positive, positive momentum. So the bulls are in control. And if you do like to kind of press on higher from here, we could be looking at heading up towards, uh, up back up towards kind of one spot, set one spot 34.72, there thereabouts. And should we go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting one spot 36. Any move to the downside in, uh, in pound US dollar could find some support from the zone here in around one spot 32. And even if you have a pretty decent break below that, we could look head back down toward the psychologically important 130 area. I'll take a look at some commodities now, starting off in gold. So, gold had a terrific run for many, many months, and uh, culminating in a six-year high that was achieved in September. But since then, we see the market have a pretty, have a pretty relaxed um, correction, a bit of a drift lower. Not that not aggressive sell-off, but the market has been broadly pushing lower um, since September over the last few months. A nice series of lower lows and lower highs. Granted, we are off the, we are off its recent lows, but at the same time, it's failed to kind of get back above this blue line here, the 50 moving average, and that comes to play at one spot 14.78. And while we hold below that metric, it's likely that we could see further pressure being uh, kept on the market to the downside. So if we do press that lower from here, we could really get target in this area here in at one spot 14.45. Um, if we do manage to press, we get back above the blue line here, the 50 moving average. We could be looking at targeting the kind of 1500 area, which is kind of a big psychological number. And if you get above that, we could be looking at targeting this zone here in around 1520. Take a look now at what's going on on the oil market, starting off with Brent crude. So, broadly speaking, since um, early October, we've seen a nice upward move in the uh, in the area. Uh, in the oil market, series of higher highs and higher lows. In fact, for the last couple of sessions, we've, uh, we've been comfortably above this red line here, the 200 moving average, and that comes to play at 64 spot 65. So you can hold above that, that, that metric. We could be looking at heading back up towards it on 65. Well, we can go back above that, we could be looking back up towards $66 a barrel. And then if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting some of the levels that we saw. In early September, in around kind of you know $69 a barrel, and if we go beyond that, we, that would have a fairly decent sign that we're going to see fairly gains. But we're going to see further gains. But keep in mind, these highs were achieved on the back of the um, the drone strike at the Saudi oil facility, so it might be some time before we even get to these levels. But it, it is still very clear, nonetheless, that the trend is to the, up, to the upside on the Brent oil. If you do drop back below this red line here, the uh, 50 the moving average. Support could potentially be found from this blue line here, the 50 moving average. We can see that act as support nicely on a few occasions, so it might act as support again in the future. And that, come, that comes into play at 62 spot 15. And lastly, I'll take a look at WTI. Similar to Brent crude, it's been pushing higher since uh, mid October. A nice series of higher highs and higher lows. So we've basically we're just back above the psychology button of 60 bucks per barrel. If you could continue to press on higher from here, we could look at retesting 62 dollars a barrel. Uh, any moves to the downside in the oil market might find support in around 58 dollars a barrel. Or potentially for this red line here, the 50 moving average. Sorry, apologies. The red line is the 30 moving average, and that comes to play at 58. Sorry, 57 spot 59. So. Keep an eye for that metric. Uh, if you are trading at a Brent crude or WTI, keep in mind, you know, the, the charts of the two look fairly similar because the markets are moving in a very similar direction. And that ties in uh, with, with one tenant uh, of Dow theory, whereby the averages must confirm each other. So essentially, essentially states, 
Uh, if market's in a particular trend, if a similar market to it, to bring crude, WTI, or vice, vice versa, if they're not moving in a similar direction, you can be more confident that that, that, that trend is going to continue. And uh, that's all for me this week. Thank you for tuning in, and please tune in next week. Thank you very much.